you smell like a swamp. Stand over there this instant. Uh, as you wish, milady. My manservant did as you asked. Will you Do allow I him to observe to your ritual? Over? If you insist. Come, dry skin. Join us in the lodge. The Us starts now. Breathe deep the arousing fumes. Take it all in. Let your aligned essences guide you. When you feel totally filled, relax your cloaca Hurry it along, and Mom. let it all out. Uh, I don't think I have a cloaca. Don't have a... Oh, no. You must exit the lodge right now, dry skin. That was most peculiar. Stibbins! Oh, not again! <sighs> My sorry excuse for a manservant can't even take part in a simple Argonian ritual without one disaster or another befalling him. Worse, he didn't even get a chance to tell me what happened inside the lodge before he... changed. What happened to Stibbins? <laughs> Why, the same thing that always happens. He ruined my latest undertaking by transforming into an egg. Oh, I'm sure this has something to do with the tribe's mating practices, but I can't for the life of me imagine how. But turn him back? Yes, I suppose I'll need to work on that. Or not. Imagine what might hatch from such an egg. Ooh, or maybe I'll make an omelet. I'm particularly famished after all this work. Anyway, here you are. For your assistance, it's been a pleasure. Hmm. Despite his best efforts, Stibbins actually did something right. I have plenty of material for my book, including the first eyewitness account of an actual ovum transformation. Oh, but there's work to be done. I wonder what happens if I crack the shell. You saw what I saw. Of course, when it comes to the interplay of alchemical reagents and tribal magic, anything is possible. But for the purposes of my book, let's go with the transformation theory. I certainly hope so. Who's going to prepare my supper and afternoon bath? Unless you'd be interested in... No, I suppose not. I'll contact my colleagues in the Mages Guild. I'm sure one of them can help me work this out. I know you. You borrowed a blessing stone from my construction site in Vivek City and stopped the moonlet from falling out of the sky. Now I feel kind of embarrassed. My current problem isn't anywhere near as important as saving a living god. Verona and her beloved pet Drula went for a walk in the swamp hours ago, and they still haven't returned. My wife can take care of herself, but she's as unfamiliar with this terrain as I am. I fear the worst may have happened. Verona saw some ancient Argonian stonework out in the swamp. She loves to study the techniques of long-dead masons. Use this whistle, and Drula should come running. If you pet him and tell him he's a good boy, he'll lead you directly to Verona. Drula loves that whistle. He comes running whenever we blow it. I'm sure Verona just got caught up examining an interesting piece of carved stone, but I appreciate you going to check on her. I'll just wait here in case they return. Droolers are Bantam Gua. Cute little slobberer was a marriage gift, and he's been with us ever since. He's more attached to Verona than to me, truth be told, and she's trained him well. Just blow the whistle and he'll come running. 
Verona constantly complains that we never take a vacation. So when the opportunity presented itself, I set up this trip to visit Merkmire. She was suddenly surprised, but I get the feeling she was hoping for somewhere with a bit less mud. We met on one of my construction sites. I was just an assistant overseer on that project, and Verona was one of our stonemasons. She's really good at her craft. Whenever she gets the chance, she loves to learn new techniques for working stone. Same as always, thanks to you. Bar Dao hangs peacefully above the city, Lord Vivek writes and sings in his palace, and our new Archcanon has adapted well to his responsibilities. In fact, things are so quiet that we decided to take this trip. the champion of Vivek. I remember you. Did Drula find you and bring you out here? Oh, he's such a good boy. Shira last sent you. She worries too much. But that's why I love her. We did get a little turned around, and then that creature started sniffing around. Now that you're here, I think we can make a break for it. Drula can lead me back to Shira Lass. Come on, Drula. Let's go find Shiralos.
It's no use. Pockets have been picked clean. Nothing is ever... Good, you're here. You found us. Good. As you can see, we've met with some difficulty. I apologize for the unsightliness. Were your inquiries in Brightthroat Village fruitful? Murder, apparently. The victim is... was Hitsasi. A former associate. Not so pleasant or learned as Famia, but still useful in his own way. He traveled in less reputable circles. I had hoped he could shed some light on the Blaggard's plans. That is what we are trying to determine. Whatever happened, it was neither clean nor brief. What a waste. If the Blaggards came after him, Hitsasi must have known something about the Remnant after all. Look around and see what you can find. What have you found? Show them to me, if you would. Pages torn from Hitsatsi's journal. I do not mean to speak ill of the dead, but I must admit some surprise. He never struck me as someone committed enough to keep a journal. If he knew about the Remnant, this could prove invaluable. So, the Blackguards have learned what we already know. The truth of the Remnant cannot be torn from my eggkin because they do not know it. Only their tribal relics can provide the answers. How did you learn the Brightthroat's riddle? You see? The voice of the Hiss needs a conduit, some physical means of communication. The Blackguards fail to acquire the Brightthroat's chime, but they clearly mean to steal some relic from the Deadwater tribe. Bold. Or... Spectacularly stupid. Precisely. You know one of the tribe's calls, don't you? Jaxic Orn, if I recall correctly. Find her, and plead our case. If the Deadwater tribe has some way of learning more about the Remnant, we need to find it before the Blackguards do. Safe travels. When you've concluded your business with the Deadwater tribe, Meet me back at Cyrodiila Collection's headquarters in Lilmouth. We're getting close. I can... I can almost feel it. Please, don't mistake my stoic demeanor for a lack of enthusiasm. All of this is tremendously exciting. But, in answer to your inquiry, yes. The primacy of these relics is a thrilling discovery. It supports a theory of mine about the Hist. Well, I wrote a treatise on the subject some years ago, a brisk 400 pages, but I suppose I can give you a summary. Argonians share a special relationship with their hist. They hear its will, taste its decrees. Yes, well, that's just it. I can't hear the hist. When I place my hands on the hist's bark or rest in the shadow of its boughs, I hear nothing. No whispers, no faint smells or soothing tones. Just silence. Deafening silence. Thank you. I admit the silence troubles me, but do you see? My eggkin sometimes need intermediaries, too. With these antiquities, the chimes, the dead water relic, and eventually the remnant itself. Perhaps I'll finally hear something.
I'll be at this a while. I grind my fangs. This is a desecration. I narrow my eyes. I know what you seek. You and the blackguards both. Sojay and I hack and cleave and stab, yet more Ogels swim over our borders every day, all looking for the remnant of Argon. I must find it first. I will find it first. My consider. We killed many savages together. We will do so again. If the Hist thinks you are worthy of remnant secrets, you will survive. If not, so be it. I hunt blackguards. They skulk around our village, yanking up our grave stakes like salt daisies. I arch my brow ridge. Special. Yes. Our grave stakes do not just pin the dead to their resting place. Each tells a story, some as old as the tribe itself. Some of our greatest Raj calls even had the honor of using a hiss bow to make their stakes. Yes. All the more reason to hack these blackguards dead. Meet me in the swamp east of the village. Our quarry is there. Many unstaked bog blights also. Freed from their dead sleep by those thieving savages. Bear your fangs, Ogel. Time for war. Keeping myself busy here. Uh. Uh. Here already. You are swift, Ogel. I will give you that. But enough flattery, I think. From now on, all is war talk. We seek the grave stakes of several Deadwater calls and vengeance. 
I know how we can claim both. The blackguards steal our fallen Eggkin's grave stakes without regard for the stake's purpose. Now, the rivers choke on bog blights, dead and not dead things that eat Naga's whole. With cunning, we will see to it that they eat only blackguards. The blackguard savages build pongees. This word means fumers. Racks of oily, spoiled meat that keep the bog blights off their scent. As we recover the grave stakes, destroy the fumers. The dead not dead will find our enemies and do the rest. This time we attack as one. One serpent, two heads. A single spear ant means nothing, but a hive means death. A bog blight is nothing to us alone, but when they gather in great numbers, great danger. Great glory also for those who fight them. My egg brother Soje fell to the bog blights. Do not be. It was a glorious battle, and he fights with me still, you see. For the dead water, death is certain, but death brings new life. As shield and bow, or axe and knife. In time, the soul moves on. Everything changes, but nothing ends. <clears throat> I curl my lips. Poetic. Another word for soft, I think. Soft words belong to bright throats like Sukas. Enough egg-gazing, we have work to do. We call them Zulvats. They tell the stories of our victories, and our defeats. Tales from childhood, names of friends, dreams, nightmares. They also keep the dead down where they belong. In the mud. Often enough to earn a name. Bog Blight. Many strange things stalk the deep murk, Ogel. Beasts of vine and stone. Giant Hajmota. Ghost people. Slimes. Plants with maws like crocodiles. Dead not dead seem tame by comparison. I nod my head. Yes. Until some tail-lifting savage steals the stake. You see, we are back where we started. Good. The bog lights will feast on this camp soon enough.
Yes. These blackguards will pay a high price for challenging the Deadwater tribe. Well done. Now travel north. We will raid their main encampment and finish this. I know I spoke of fighting as one, but these two were too loud and foolish. So Jay and I had to kill them. Before they died, they spoke of the remnant and the hissed woodgrave stakes. One shouted at the other about a relic they could not find. The grave stake of a chronicall. The great Deadwater war chief called Etra of the Many Spears. Few Deadwater warriors rival Etra. He is Wutum. You would say legend, I think. I blink my eyes. Maybe. Reading Azulvat is Gravesinger work. We cannot know until we claim the stake. You will have to fight him for it. All Deadwater Carls know Etra's resting place. Look west and follow the ridgeline. His tomb is there. My tale sinks. Etra is buried in the Tomb of Many Spears, an unclean place. Vahat, or taboo in the dry tongue. Sojay and I cannot fight there, but you can. If you can pry the stake away from Etra, bring it to the Gravesinger's Lodge. I will reclaim your body and make a helm of your skull. You have earned that, at least. Why do you slump? Bristle your war spines. Etra was a legend, true. But what you fight is not Etra. It is the pieces not needed, bound together by slime and old-time magic. A beast to crush and cleave. Take your weapon and strike true. A call has no tongue for stories, but I will do my best.
The Nahish elders say that Etra had a soul older than the tribe. Even before he hatched, the egg handlers heard him chanting from inside his tiny shell. Blood. Death. Glory. I shake my head. A hero to us. Not to you, I think. Etra rolled across the marsh like a thunderhead, felling great trees, slaying huge beasts, and eating the hearts of great warriors. Often, Etra would take his opponent's grave stakes as a trophy. He stored them in the great stone vault that eventually became his tomb. The place where you will face him. The Tomb of Many Spears. One dark day, a great slime claimed the vault. When Etra learned of this, he grew furious and attacked. He did not. He died in glory. Many great Deadwater Calls raided the tomb, seeking pieces of Etra. Bones or sinew to make mighty weapons. They all died. Now their corpses, and what remains of Etra's, stalk the tomb forever. Like I said, Bahat. I roll my eyes. If you do not hurry, I will end up telling the story of the slow-legged Ogel who lost the remnant of Argon. Go now. Be swift. <laughs> 